Welcome to this episode of Best of America by Horseback. I'm Tom C. On this episode, we're gonna take you down to South Carolina. It's early March. We're only 30 minutes off Interstate 95. The red buds are blooming, the dogwoods, the azaleas, the grass is green. It's 82 degrees. At home in Virginia, it's 17 degrees. In the Midwest, it's below zero. If you're looking for a great place to ride early in the spring, in the summer, or really any time of the year, this is the place. It's called Broxton Bridge Plantation. They have 6,000 acres and 80 miles of trails for you to ride on. I especially enjoyed the smooth sandy trails any rider, any level can ride on. Our riders will be treated on Saturday evening to a low country boil. And if you've never seen what that is, you're gonna enjoy watching this as much as they enjoyed eating. We'll be taking a historical tour with reenactors they will present the flag, they will do the national anthem, we'll have a blessing of the ride, and then have a wonderful ride on this beautiful plantation. This plantation is rich in family history, and they're eager to share it with you and make everybody feel welcome, especially with their Southern hospitality. They will make you feel like family. This is a wonderful place to ride, and if you haven't discovered South Carolina, and this part of the country, this is the place to go. We had over 100 riders enjoy this beautiful location and a beautiful ride, perfect weather. Sit back and relax and watch this episode of Best of America by Horseback. On this episode of Best of America by Horseback, Tom C. is riding with over 100 guests at Broxton Bridge Plantation. Located just south of Earhart, South Carolina, this plantation dates all the way back to the late 1700s and encompasses thousands of acres. It has been in the Barn family for many generations. The location boasts a variety of events and activities for visitors. They host trail rides, endurance riding, trail challenges, hunting and shooting events, fishing, banquets, dual sport motorcycle rides, and so much more. When equestrian guests visit Broxton Bridge Plantation, they have 80 miles of private trails they can ride, making it a perfect place to return to many times and explore different trails each time you come. Breathtaking views of the river, peaceful paths through old forests of pines and hardwoods will greet you as you ride through this South Carolina hidden gem. RV hookups, panel corrals, a bathhouse, and a snack shack are available for riders to use. There is also a bed and breakfast available on the plantation for lodging. Broxton Bridge Plantation takes great pride in the year-round hunting and shooting events offered on the grounds. Enthusiasts can join them for duck, hog, pheasant, and bobwhite quail hunts, or join one of the many tower shoots and sporting clay events. Groups of up to 40 can enjoy everything the plantation has to offer for an exciting trip of sport, fellowship, and good food. The plantation also has a private airstrip where aviation enthusiasts can join them for the annual fly-in breakfast, part of the South Carolina Breakfast Club, where pilots and friends have been meeting every other Sunday since 1938. You're watching Best of America by Horseback. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Best of America by Horseback. Tom C. is riding at Broxton Bridge Plantation in Earhart, South Carolina. Tom sat down with owner Jerry Varn to talk about the history of the plantation and all that it has to offer guests. Jerry, I have met a lot of people in my lifetime, but I've never met anyone that is more in love with the land where they were raised down home than you. Thank you. What's your earliest memory of being here at this place? Earliest memory would be fishing, 
in the pond or getting thrown by a horse, you know, in the, in the field. But uh, always good memories here. One of the trails we're going to ride on is a former railroad bed. Correct. And they built it for a purpose. What was that purpose? About 110 years ago, they decided they were going to build a narrow gauge railroad and they cut 12 miles of the Saukatchee Swamp in eight years and they shipped it back on railroad about 14 miles. You have come full circle from the old ways of doing things to modern conservation and protecting. Uh, I was watching the seedling trees that have been planted here. How does that program work? Very well. We like always putting back. Uh, and farming is great if farming's needed, but sometimes the land is too sandy really to support. So it's best just to go ahead and put it in trees. And when you do, it just enhances the hunting and the trail riding and everything else we do. So it, it's really nice. What is the mystique about protecting and, and making sure this is here for future generations? It's more of a caretaker. All my life I've been told that the land would never be mine, that I was the caretaker, and that when I give it to the next generation, it will be as good or better. And that's sort of the reason why it's still on the 10th generation and it's still in the family being passed down. This also is a sportsman's paradise. People come here from all over to hunt and fish. Uh, talk about some of the hunting opportunities. The hunting for anything from the deer. We're very fortunate here that we have the longest deer season in the United States. So much agriculture, so many places in the swamp for them to use as a freeway to come and go as they want. The turkey have really taken off. The turkey hunting is great and they thoroughly enjoy it. In other parts of the country, people get excited about seeing a four point or six point deer, but they get a little bit bigger down here. How big do they get? They can. The average is going to be for anywhere from eight point to 12 point, which you'll get some. We had a 16 point last year. They don't get much bigger than that. True. It was, it was gorgeous. The trails we're going to ride on this ride. Uh, tell me what we're seeing when we ride on these trails. Where will we be going? What will we be looking at? And how is that intertwined with the history? The trails are going to average anywhere from 15 to 20 feet wide. They're anything good for mountain biking to horses to your buggy and carriage. Even people who can't ride anymore bring their golf cart, their RTV, and then go ride the trails. They love it because they've got 80 miles of trail. You're going to come across different places that, uh, like the tram road that has been there over 110 years. That really makes it neat that the customers will find a piece of coal and it just blows their mind, but it's left over from the tram road from the steam driven engine that was coal fired. So it's, it's nice on that. But historically, you'll go by where my third great uncle had a mercantile store, which is now our pro shop, where he had a grits mill. And uh, it's just, it's everywhere it's just history. It's hard to believe. Uh, you could go and find house spots. My grandfather, after he came back from World War I, and he was farming, he had a sharecropper every 50 acres. And you'll find a house spot every 50 acres. And the stuff you find there, metal detecting, digging, is so interesting because it could be from the 30s or the early 1940s or from the late 20s. It's just always a surprise, always an adventure. There's an airstrip in the middle of the property. Um, people can fly into here. Yes. And you fly. Yes, sir. And you enjoy that quite a bit. I do. When you fly over this uh, land, all the acreage, 6,000 acres, uh, do you have a special spot you'd like to fly over and see? I could tell you a lot about that, but now I want the FAA to know everything I do. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's looking at the trees and finding trees that lightning is struck that we can go in and get before they rot or cause any problems as far as disease spreading. As far as seeing where to build new trails or finding the new trail and just say, well, you know, well, I could have done this and you're making it different. Or places, good, great places to build a new pond. It's just, it's really neat. Flying will probably always be my first love. Of all the years we've been doing this, this has to be the first place 
that has gone the extra mile for the riders for water and porta potties. You have laid them out. Talk about that. Mainly started with the endurance riders. Some with the trail riders, but they could they could go so many miles before they needed water. But then with the endurance, they every five miles seemed to work out great. And then I had the access to have the totes. Each place has got 500 gallons of water. And uh, then the Porter Johns came along and it's like, we are set. They've never been treated at any other endurance ride like there are at Broxton Bridge. Talk about the other events that occur here. The fox hunting groups is about, on, at times, five different groups that come in. They're always a pleasure to deal with. We also have different trail challenging groups. There's probably nine different types of equestrian groups that come along with the endurance and all. The horse world here is large and they're friends forever. It really makes it nice on that. I thoroughly enjoy them on that part. We'll have a event called the Family Riders out of Charleston, which is a dual sport, something that they've been doing now close to 40 years. And it could be anywhere from 250 to 600 motorcycles. This is a very pleasant place to come in the middle of the winter. It is, it is. You can, it's less than 100 days, you cannot wear flip-flops here. You can get on the interstate if you're coming down 95, you can come straight on down through Virginia and North Carolina, and then we're not too far from 95 here. 25 miles. So it's easy to get to. We can get used a lot, people traveling, snowbirds. Uh, coming off of 95, we're a place where just about eight hours, you know, from New York, stuff like that, so they, they enjoy that. Tell me about the facilities here. You can, any size rig can come in. Correct. Water, electric, sewer, and so forth, but how many people can you accommodate? Talk about the campground a little bit. The campground's got 135 sites. Uh, they're about half full hookup with sewer and about half just water and electricity. Uh, we've got your panels for your horse, so he, they'll be on your campsite with you and everything. The bathhouse is very accommodating. The snack shack is great for a registration office or for cooking, and you can sit about 30 people in it. If it gets larger than that, then we go to our banquet hall where we can sit 120 people and take care of them with our commercial kitchen. We'll serve about 10,000 meals a year here. Is it fair to say that there are strong families, strong people here that are preserving a gentler, kinder way of life? I would agree. It, uh, when your mother's here, does she have a favorite flowers, favorite plants that she enjoys and a favorite place she enjoys being around? Wherever the people are. My mother is a great lady. As long as you remember that red hair did not come out of a bottle, you'll get along with her fine. I wish you hadn't said that because it's going to be very, very hard not for her to <laughs> give me the look. <laughs> but I, She's I, awesome. She will have fun and, talk, and just love talking with you. From what I've heard from you and what I've seen in pictures, she reminds me of my mother, just gracious to everyone. Everyone's welcome, everyone counts, everybody. You will find welcome. out she might be busy, but her plate is never full. She'll always have time for you. Jerry, I can't, I've felt at home in many places, but I can't think of a place that I have felt more welcome and enjoyed the history, thinking about my family and my parents, my grandparents, my great-grandparents. It's sort of a parallel in a way. This is just a fine place to come. It's wonderful to do the television show Best of America by Horseback, but every now and then you visit a place that truly is the very best of America, and I believe this is it. Thank you. Thank you so much for being with us. Yes, sir. During our ride weekend at Broxton Bridge, Jerry Barn treated our riders and staff to a true Southern feast known as a low country boil at the Saturday night banquet in the plantation's own banquet hall that was once a schoolhouse. One of the highlights of this show is what they call a low country boil. If you've never been there or had one, you just hadn't lived yet. What is it? How did you cook it? Started off with onions, then our Hillshire sausage, then our red potatoes, then our corn on the cob, and then our shrimp. Okay. 
So it's made so it all comes out at the same time. Put it things in for the cooking time. Everything's timed by so many minutes. The banquet hall was filled with the aroma of fresh seafood, laughter, and joy of new and renewed friendships, and a lot of very happy guests. When Best of America by Horseback returns, we'll showcase the special presentation of the Civil War reenactment held at Broxton Bridge annually, and speak with some of the men who return every year to run it. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Best of America by Horseback. Tom C. is riding with viewers at Broxton Bridge Plantation in South Carolina. On the southern end of the plantation lies a Civil War battleground. The Broxton Bridge reenactment is held on these grounds every year. Owner Jerry Varn invited some of the reenactors, including cavalry reenactors, to help kick off our ride on Saturday morning. My group of cavalrymen, we represent the 3rd South Carolina Cavalry when we're doing reenactments here. We're part of Hampton's Legion, is our reenactor group. We've been here today to escort you all around the battlefield and so show you one of the last fights that was fought against General Sherman when he came through the Carolinas. One of the things that the cavalrymen had to do, they had to drill and they had to learn formations. And we're gonna briefly do a couple of formations out in the field in front of you, uh, deploying the skirmishers as they would if they were going through an area looking for their enemy. And just basic horse formations that they used and, and tactics they used in cavalry. Maybe even show you a little cavalry charge. Edward Floyd led the Pledge of Allegiance and sang the national anthem as they raised the colors. Starting at the working blacksmith shop, a two-hour tour was held for guests to learn, ask questions about, and experience this small slice of American history. Guests were escorted around the battlefield by the reenactors and learn about the history and events that took place on these hallowed grounds. A museum is in the works to be built on this location. The uh, a topic that seems to be very close to your heart is building the new museum. Very much. What's going to be in this museum? This museum, it'll be anything from American Indian to early American in the late 1700s to the 1800s. Also, there will be stuff that we have found uh, from the Revolutionary War. Anything from the bridal conchs, British bridal conchs, to stuff on the saddle to even a officer's uh, stirrup that they would have, he, an all British officer went ahead doing the cavalry and stuff. And then a lot of Civil War era stuff and just stuff from my great grandmother and great, great grandmother. You know, it's really neat. On Sunday morning after breakfast, a cowboy church service was held led by Best of America by Horseback's own Tom C. If you'd like to learn more about visiting Broxton Bridge Plantation in Earhart, South Carolina, you can visit their website, broxtonbridge.com, or call them at 1-800-437-HUNT. And keep up with all their activities on their Facebook page, Broxton Bridge Plantation. Thank you so much for watching Best of America by Horseback. We hope you'll join us next week and maybe on future shows. Visit our website, bestofamericabyhorseback.com. See where we're going. Maybe you can join us as well. Visit us on Facebook and watch previous shows on YouTube. I'm Tom C. Thank you so much for watching.